I think I may have fallen victim to the charms of a goddess. I meant a demon. Yes, a demon. You know, it's common for us to see hate as an essential ingredient for horror. But what about love? Do you really think that the feelings of love can be used for the perfect horror story? I think it's possible. How we humans can find ourselves driven when seeing how far we are willing to go when showing someone how much we love them. Far enough to where you're infected with these terrible thoughts, consumed with these inner temptations of killing. Introduction Ishizuka. This poor miserable soul you see in the bathroom where its walls are caked with blood and bits of flesh, smashing the mounds of meat on the floor, seems like our boy has found himself in a situation. Oh yes, my friends. This is the feelings of love that driven this man into committing murder, but didn't expect that disposing a body would be this problematic, which is why Ishizuka decided to call his friend, former friend, for some help. Now, I don't think it should be much of a mystery as to why Ishizuka and Nagaoka's friendship had just came to an end. I mean, if you can love somebody so much to where you're willing to commit murder, it's obvious that it was because of a woman why these two are not on speaking terms. Until now. After Ishizuka mentioned that he had just killed Tomie and needs help on disposing her body. And like the good friend he is, Nagaoka wasted no time to see if his beloved Tomie was okay. And when arriving to Ishizuka's apartment, not seeing Tomie, but instead an exhausted Ishizuka in a bathroom full of blood, meat, in a hand. Well, what happened is that Ishizuka ended up loving Tomie a bit too much. Actually, to where he ended up having to kill her. Nagaoka would have done the same, which is why Ishizuka spared him the trouble. What are friends for? And while trying to cut up her body into pieces, that's when the strangest thing happened. Tomie started to regrow. And that's when Ishizuka spent the whole day trying to stop her from regrowing by smashing her bones and body into jelly. And yet, she keeps multiplying. Not only is the fridge filled with Tomie, but also several trash cans filled with nothing but Tomie. At first, Nagaoka wasn't buying it. All this meat for one person? It had to be a prank. But when noticing the meat moving, shifting, growing, and the strong aroma in the air, it was Tomie, and she was still multiplying. Thankfully, Nagaoka has an idea that can resolve this situation. So with trash cans of Tomie flesh on their hands, what better way to dispose the mashed up remains of a body than bringing it to a factory that produces sake? As it turns out, Nagaoka's family produces sake, and by tying up his mother and father, both Nagaoka and Ishizuka begin disposing Tomie's remains into one of the sake vats. Based off the amount of Tomie flesh, it shouldn't be enough to affect the sake. However, the tricky part is dealing with Tomie's flesh regenerating. So by stirring every bit of flesh into the sake, The process of mixing Tomie's remains into the vat should stop her from growing. However, both men did not expect that it would be this long and tiring. It's a scary thought, really, to see what will happen if all that flesh were to fully grow. Not hoping to see what kind of unremitting horror would be unleashed. A couple hours later, and far from being finished, By now, the flesh being mixed in with the sake was filling the air with this pungent aroma. It was becoming too much. Even the vat of sake was now filling up. It just felt like it was too much Tomie. Tomie. All this because of how these men are in love with Tomie. They killed her because of these intense feelings within them. And now here they are struggling their bodies weaken, stirring the endless amount of flesh because of how they have this uncontrollable attachment for Tomie. So tired, 
wanting to be free from this woman and move on. But there was just so much love for Tomie that Ishizuka Nagaoka could even hear her voice from the vat. They could even see her image on the surface, pathetically crying for her forgiveness, to be worthy of her love, to show their true feelings for her by having one more chance to be with her, to kill her again and again. Now with the air more dense, and the vat full of boiling sake mixed in with the flesh of a demonic witch that refuses to die, Nagaoka and Ishizuka was left with no other choice but to split up the corrupted sake into another vat. Overwhelmed with fatigue and exhaustion, and an unexpected surprise when Nagaoka realized that he had forgotten about the employees, who had just suddenly shown up, shocked by the horrible stench in the air and their boss and his wife tied up. Immediately investigating the vats, assuming that the factory is being vandalized, the employees were confused when seeing Nagaoka stirring the thick, reddish liquid, trying to figure out what was in the vats, this horrid smell, the faint sound in the air. There was something mesmerizing about this strange liquid, experiencing these inner feelings of love. Can't say that love is in the air. When seeing Ishizuka and Nagaoka and the two employees stirring the vats of special sake. But there was another corrupted soul within the factory who desperately wanted to know the secret behind this aroma that was filling the factory. Nagaoka's father, who's been tied up this whole time, had this desperate urge to know what his son been doing to the sake. He had to know the secret behind this sweet smell lingering in the air. This whole time, the old man never thought that his useless son would be able to produce something that will change the business for the better. And after being free from the ropes, Nagaoka's father would be the first man to taste the Moromi. All these years, he had never tasted anything that was so rich, so smooth. Of course, it is unthinkable to make sake out of human flesh. But what these fools don't realize is that this is first-rate Moromi. And gathering around a bucket of corrupted sake, these men realizing the morbid situation they're in and yet helpless to the fact that they are about to do something unthinkable. This inner drive, this obsession with the woman having these men wanting to do more than commit murder, loving Tomie so much that there's this intense desire to consume her flesh experiencing the forbidden taste of sake going down their throats, the taste being so delicious, so sweet. And after a long day of murder and hard work, that's when these men begin indulging their own supply. How did it come to this? How did these feelings of love drive these men into doing something unthinkable? These murderers drunken from the body of a witch, Tomie is dead. Ishizuka killed her, smashed her flesh and bones into jelly, mixed her remains into the sake, and yet Ishizuka can still smell her in the air. Her voice can still be heard within the vats. He could even feel her running through his body. And waking to the faint sound of Tomie's voice, calling for her beloved Ishizuka, Tomie's sweet voice pulling this man from his drunken days. Her voice telling him that she still loves him. Finally, seizing the moment to tell Tomie how much he loves her, following the voice to the vats, this pathetic man begging for forgiveness, begging for Tomie's love. And when looking into the vat, seeing Tomie's faces on the surface of the sake, hearing her voice through the popping bubbles. Ishizuka is about to be rewarded with Tomie's love when seeing the formations within the sake, the heads and hands reaching out from the boiling liquid. Ishizuka was now helpless to the horror that was emerging from the vat, an amalgam of Tomie's coming to greet her lover, to reward these pitiful men with her love. Tomie was now everywhere in the factory, from the dense aroma in the air to the sake that was overflowing the vats. Every drop of sake that spilled onto the floor, being formed into Tomie's, wanting to embrace these men, to love them. Oh yes, how they craved her, desired her. These men who wanted her so badly, 
that they are willing to do more than murder her, more than taste her body. The fact that these men, not knowing how far they are willing to go for her love, have made them afraid. Realizing how helpless they are to these inner impulses for Tomie, they now belong to Tomie, and there is nothing they can do about it. As for Ishizuka, watching the others being engulfed by the possessed Saki, this boy who's been wanting to seek forgiveness from Tomie for killing her, Ishizuka is about to get his wish when noticing the monstrosity growing from the vat, the corrupted Moromi forming into Tomie, pulling itself up and give Ishizuka the opportunity to seek forgiveness, to hear him say how he did all this out of love, to look down on Ishizuka as he wept with fear, to hear him say how much he loves Tomie, to hear those sweet words, I love Tomie. After experiencing that horrible hallucination, these men had a lot of work to do, a business to run, because this sake is going to sell like none other. You could say that what makes this sake so special is when people experience the taste, they'll easily tell that a lot of love was put into it. <laughs> I still think that love would make a special ingredient for horror. Anyways, my friends. For those of you who enjoy drinking games, who downed a shot when hearing me say, Love Tomie, you just might find yourself falling prey to her charms, embracing her love. But if you're sober enough... <laughs>